Hello everyone, it's Chris Pritt back again with a new topic in West Virginia Divorce. Today we're going to be talking about who lives in the house after the two people are considered to be separate and apart. Now, there is no provision in the West Virginia Code that allows for you to necessarily make one person or the other leave the house, at least until the temporary hearing. Now, there are ways to get the person out of the house under somewhat extraordinary circumstances. So, for example, let's say that the other person has committed domestic violence against you. If that happens, you can go down and file for a domestic violence protective order, and as a result of that, the per person can be made to leave the house, uh, at least until you get to the, the hearing on the domestic violence petition. However, barring that, there's no kind of emergency provisions that exist for requiring or making one person or the other leave the house. So one thing that you have sometimes in West Virginia is two people living in the same house um, while the divorce proceeding is going on. Most of the time that is not advisable. Sometimes it is, but for the most part it's not. You have to have a large degree of cooperation and the ability to get along well together for that to happen, though I do see it from time to time. So one of the things you need to be thinking about is, number one, can I live with this person? And you also need to be thinking about, is there a chance that there's going to be some sort of incident? Okay, so let's say that there's been domestic violence in the past. Uh, that would be a good reason that um, you might want to move out. Also, too, if you think that um, there's going to be a false allegation of domestic violence, that's another reason why you might think about moving out of the house. So those are some things that you need to be thinking about. It's really, really important that uh, you give this a lot of thought in in terms of whether you move out, you need to probably speak with an attorney at least briefly about what you should be doing. It, it, that's one of the factors that's sometimes used as leverage when it comes to, uh, for example, parenting. So let's say that uh, you move out of the house and the other spouse is left in the house with the children. Um, sometimes that can be used as some leverage when it comes to the parenting plan. I've seen that happen quite a bit. But it's really, really important that you come up with a plan and you think about whether it's likely that there's going to be some sort of incident uh, going into the future if you remain in the house. So that's something that you need to be thinking about and it can affect the kind of budget you might have or be thinking about uh, if you're asking for alimony as well. So that consists of today's video. We were just talking about uh, circumstances in which one or both people might be remaining in the marital home after the, the, the two of you have, in a legal sense, separated. So if you have any questions at all, feel free to give us a call or send an email. Have a good day.